Cassie Bjorg was born and raised in Atlanta and moved to Lawrenceville, Georgia at some point in her childhood. Cassie had some behavioral issues when she lived in Duluth, Georgia, with her mother, which led to her getting a long juvenile record by the age of 16. In October 2015, Cassie's grandparents Wendy and Randall filed for custody of Cassie from their daughter, and they won it in January 2016, bringing Cassie to live with them in Lawrenceville. They reportedly thought that by removing Cassie from the bad crowd in Duluth and giving her a stable home in Lawrenceville, she was going to get a fresh start and would turn her life around. Unfortunately, they were mistaken. In Lawrenceville, Cassie attended Peachtree Ridge High School, but only for a short while, before she dropped out and went back to her bad behavior. Cassandra proved to be a handful for the elderly couple, and she ran away on several occasions. Over several months in 2016, Cassandra was reported missing by the worried elderly couple more than once. On December 18, 2016, Cassandra's grandmother, Wendy, took to Facebook and reported Cassandra missing, when she returned home sometime in January of 2017. A few months later on April 1, 2017, Cassandra ran away again, and Wendy again took to Facebook asking if anyone has seen her granddaughter, and like last time Cassandra did return home. Police records show that between October 18, 2015, and March 2017, they responded to the Bjork home 31 times for various reasons. 18 of which were runaway calls. There were also calls for domestic disputes and illegal substance use. In one incident in 2016, police were called after Cassie reportedly assaulted her grandmother. Wendy told the responding officer that she and Cassie were arguing about her granddaughter's behavior, which included staying out late and being disrespectful, and that during the altercation, Cassie threw water at her. The officer later noted in his report that during his interviews with Wendy, Cassie was very vocal and kept interrupting her grandmother. Noting, I heard her several times while Miss Bjorg would speak and some smart aleck remark during which time I had to intervene several times, for her to be quiet and not speak when an adult is talking. At this point, the Gwinnett County Police considered her a habitual runaway, so they started taking these claims a little less seriously. Cassandra's grandparents felt that she wasn't fully to blame. Wendy and Randall Bjorg put a lot of the blame on Cassandra's a 19-year-old boyfriend, Johnny Ryder. There is one thing that no teenage girl wants to hear, that her guardians don't like her boyfriend. Due to her grandparents' dislike for her boyfriend, and other reasons, Cassandra and Johnny put together a plan. One night in early April, Cassandra and Johnny waited outside of her grandparents' house and waited for the lights to turn off. Once the elderly couple went to bed, Cassandra and Johnny snuck into the house and went upstairs to their room and attacked them. Johnny took out Cassandra's grandfather, and Cassandra dragged her grandmother into the bathroom, where she beat her before slicing her throat. The teens then barricaded the bedroom, even caulking the windows where the smell wouldn't escape, and continued to live in the house for a couple of days, even going as far as throwing a party. Several days passed with the bodies still undiscovered. Meanwhile, the teenage killers lived in the house as if nothing was wrong. They lived without restraint and soon with the help of the confidence they gained in a double murder, began to create even more evil schemes, including taking revenge on Johnny's mother and sister. So the next Saturday, April 8th of 2017, Johnny and Cassandra traveled to his mother's home on Rambling Woods Drive. His sister and her boyfriend arrived shortly after they got there, and when she went to her room, she noticed that it was torn apart and that several items were missing. When the two went to confront Johnny and Cassandra downstairs, Johnny immediately pepper sprayed both of them and then yelled for Cassandra to grab a baseball bat. Cassandra and Johnny then went on to beat the two savagely with the baseball bat, but somehow they were able to get away. Once they got away they immediately called 911, 
But when the police arrived, Johnny and Cassandra were gone. But when they ran, they left behind Cassandra's grandparents' car, which led police back to their residence. A residence the Gwinnett County Police knew far too well. The police decided to go back to the Bjork home and do another welfare check on the couple. This time they forced their way inside the house and then went upstairs to check. Much to their horror, they found Wendy and Randall dead. They believed the couple's 17-year-old granddaughter, Cassandra Bjorg, and her 19-year-old boyfriend Johnny Ryder were involved. Police found the couple in the house after relatives asked for a welfare check. Officers checked the home earlier in the week, but they were unable to make contact. Cassie and Johnny immediately became the main suspects in the couple's death. And a manhunt was launched. The next morning, police managed to track the pair to an apartment complex in Sewanee, where they had reportedly barricaded themselves at a friend's house. The police soon surrounded the building and ordered the two teams to come out, but the pair refused. The SWAT team swarmed the complex and had a standoff with the teens that lasted for about an hour, then a robotic device was sent inside the house to assess the situation. That's when the police discovered the two teens injured in the bathroom. The pair had reportedly tried to end their lives by cutting their own wrists with a knife. SWAT was able to determine that Johnny and Cassandra were passed out on the floor of the apartment, due to self-inflicted wounds. Once SWAT figured that out, they rushed into the apartment and rushed the two to a hospital. This is a picture of the teenager accused of killing her grandparents. 17-year-old Cassandra Biorge is in custody, along with her boyfriend, 19-year-old Johnny Ryder. It's real tough. Um, it's, it's sad. Stephen Lazari lives across the street from the crime scene. He last saw his neighbors, Wendy and Randall Biorge, last week. They were really good friends of mine, and I will miss them. They were nice people, and uh, they were just trying to help her help their uh, granddaughter. Police found the couple beaten to death inside their home on Sunday. Officers were just at the house for a welfare check. Police came here after responding to an assault involving the granddaughter's boyfriend at a home a few minutes away. It's there where police found Wendy and Randall Biorge's car and linked the two cases together. One victim was found in the bedroom, the other was found down the hallway. After a search lasting several hours, police tracked down the teenagers at this apartment complex in Swanee, which led to a standoff. And when officers made their way in, they found the teens with self-inflicted knife wounds. It's in pretty insane. Um, a little shocking, kind of still surreal. I mean, just to know that uh, someone's grandparents is dead now, but then to think that they, someone that was related to them, a granddaughter, would do that is uh, yeah, just kind of baffling. And outside the home this evening, you can see there is a small memorial. Uh, you can also see the police tape still surrounding the family home. We should also mention that we've learned Cassandra Bjorge has a history of running away. This is a missing bulletins report that was uh, reported last year. Uh, we've also learned that both Cassandra and her boyfriend remain in the hospital this evening, but remain in police custody. Reporting live in Gwinnett County. Once it was clear that they were going to pull through, they were immediately arrested and charged with murder. Yeah, according to these newly filed warrants, the teens are accused of stabbing, punching, kicking, and using a tire iron on Randall and Wendy Bjorge. They're the grandparents of one of the suspects, a 17-year-old Cassandra Cassie Bjorge, who is now here in the Gwinnett County Jail. Uh, their bodies were discovered in their Lawrenceville home over the weekend, the same time Bjorge and her boyfriend Johnny Ryder were charged with assault for beating Ryder's sister and her boyfriend in another home. That beating was alleged with a bat. Overnight, Bjorge was finally released from the hospital for her own stabbing wounds, booked and charged with murder. And while she won't appear in court on the new charges until Friday morning, Ryder did face a judge on the murder charges this morning. The 19-year-old's arm remained wrapped from his stab wounds. He got this advice from a defense attorney who was standing in on his first appearance. You're on the news. Everyone in here is your friend. And they're going to come up and they're going to talk to you about your case. And then they're going to come to me or another lawyer and they will sell that information to the district attorney. You don't talk to anyone in here about anything and you stay off that phone, okay?
Now, for the first time, we are set to hear from the Bjorge family through their attorney. Now, mind you, this is a family tied to the victims and a murder suspect. I'll work on that part of the story for Channel 2 Action News starting at 4. Live in Gwinnett County, Nicole Carr, Channel 2 Action News. They both pled guilty and were each sentenced in 2018 to two life sentences, with the possibility of parole in 60 years, plus 21 years to be served concurrently with the life sentences, after they pleaded guilty to murder, aggravated assault, and theft, in the April murders of Borges' grandparents. In court, Johnny Ryder asked for forgiveness and described his crimes as evil. I know what I have done is abominable and evil, and is deserving of hellfire. I would like to express my deepest apologies to the Bjorg family. I'm so sorry for the pain and grief I have caused all of you. Cassandra was also given the same opportunity and time as Johnny to ask for forgiveness or say anything she wanted to say. But she didn't say anything throughout the entire trial. She didn't say a word when she had the opportunity from the judge.